Hey folks, so Retrieval Augmented Generation or RAG is all the rage. Um, right now, everybody is trying to use large language models on their custom data and RAG allows an awesome way where you can do that. Um, but RAG by itself has certain limitations that I'll talk about. Um, and there's this exciting new method called self-RAG uh, by which you can have uh, critical RAG through sort of self-reflection and you can, um, the folks here from University of Washington, Allen Institute of AI and IBM Research have shown how you can train a model uh, to be really good at RAG. So first of all, like, you know, this is basically the simple vanilla RAG. Uh, I like to call it vanilla RAG um, just because it's, it's pretty well understood right now, right? So you have a document database and that has you know n number of chunks here um, you have a question or a query and what happens next is you compute some sort of similarity between your chunks and um, and your query um, and then you combine that into uh, a prompt that you feed into the large language model um, so it basically contains your query and some relevant text and then you get your output answer out right um, and, you know, you can change this a little bit. You can use different similarity metrics. You can have different sorts of data, things like that. Uh, but you, you know, if you've been playing around with RAG, you might come across um, certain issues where not necessarily all the context that's being retrieved uh, is relevant, right? So these folks illustrate this through a nice example. Um, here you can see this is sort of the vanilla RAG on the left-hand side, uh, the prompt here is, how did US states get their names? Um, and let's say you retrieve three documents all the time. Um, and these are the top three, um, that, where k is equal to three. Um, and here it is, out of the 50 states, 11 are named after an individual person. Um, popular names by states, uh, which has nothing to do with the query. Right, and then California was named after a fictional island, so this is uh, relevant. Um, but when you feed all of these three into a prompt, this might confuse the LLM. And so in this case, it says, um, California was named after Christopher Columbus, um, which, uh, which is wrong, um, right? So because, and it's being confused um, by this uh, non-relevant context. self rag now, solve this problem by telling you whether a context is relevant or not. So here, again, you have these three contexts. Um, so you first you have the prompt plus context one, and self rag basically allows uh, the model to label this as relevant and um, supported, uh, whereas this second one is irrelevant. Um, and then the third one is uh, partially relevant. Um, and so what this model does is then it ranks it and it says, okay, this is important. Um, so now let's retrieve that and let's repeat it. Um, and let's sort of remove this, the second one and the third one. Um, and then it gives you this answer, uh, concatenating all the relevant context. And as you can see, this is a much cleaner answer. U.S. states got their names from a variety of sources. 11 of 50 state names comes from persons. Uh, 26 states are named after Native Americans, including Utah, right? This is a much better answer. Um, so let's now look at how this model was uh, trained. Um, and so let's you know go down a little bit in the paper. Um, and... I want to point you to this particular part that is um, relevant for us. So here, um, first of all, um, there's a generator language model um, that's being trained here. Um, and basically, this model M predicts either retrieve uh, equals yes or not first, given um, the input prompt X, as well as uh, the preceding generation y less than t. And then it tries to predict whether this next output segment y um, is relevant or not. So 
Um, what it does is if it finds that retrieve is yes, whether, you know, based on the prompt, is it important to retrieve? Is retrieval even necessary, right? So let's say it is. Um, and then it uh, retrieves relevant text passages D um, using the retriever R, which could be any sim similarity metric, uh, given this X, Y, T minus one. And then M predicts uh, whether it is relevant, uh, whether Y, T is relevant. Um, and then after that, it predicts whether the conclusions are supported um, and are useful, right? And then YT is ranked based on, is it relevant, supported, uh, and then useful. And then this continues uh, in another cycle. Uh, but if retrieval is no, then essentially, um, you know, this MGen predicts um, YT given X, um, and then it predicts whether that is uh, useful or not. Um, and then this, this is in the case where there is essentially no retrieval and the language uh, model is just basically um, doing next token uh, prediction um, to, to get the next segments. Um, so that's the main part to it. And um, so how do you train this critique model? Um, well, there are some good examples here. Um, you know, this case on the left is write an essay of your best summer vacation, right? And in this case, this is completely personal. So um, you should not be doing any retrieval, right? This is about your personal experience on your summer vacation. It's not about somebody else's experience. So uh, at rightly, this model would need to be trained to say that, okay, there is no retrieval needed. Um, and then generate one sentence. And then after that sentence, again, no retrieval and generate a sentence after that, right? And then it comes up with this uh, utility score right here. That's right here. Um, but then again, coming back to this example on the right, how did US states get their names? Um, this one would need retrieval. So um, the critic LLM, critic LM, this is because this is just a language model that's just predicting these uh, tokens, right? Um, so here it says, okay, retrieve. And then it says, um, of the 50 states, 11 are named after an individual person. That's relevant. Um, and then its conclusion is supported, and then go on to the next one, and so on and so forth, right? So you, you first need to train uh, a model that basically um, gives you these uh, tokens based on the sentence, and that is, um, I believe, just just a language model. So it's something that's, uh, that's smaller, right? And it's basically trained, um, you know, on 4K to 20K, uh, supervised um, training data. Yeah, and um, I believe they use GPT-4 to, to help uh, in the training process, right? So given an instruction, make a judgment on whether finding some external documents from the web helps to generate a better response or not, right? So you can train a model based on, on this. Um, and then the next step is um, um, critic um, is basically training the generator model. So there's basically two, two steps to this. The first step is training the critic model, which is basically just um, you know predicting what this token should be. And then the next part is the generator model. Um, and this generator model is basically just um, a standard next token prediction objective. Um, but keeping in mind that you also have you expand the vocabulary with a set of uh, reflection tokens. So I think this is pretty cool because this is not changing the underlying large language model. It's just adding these tokens to it. Um, so this is a pretty nice way where you're not messing around and fine tuning something based on a very specific data set, which has um, you know, a lot of consequences, including uh, model collapse uh, that's been seen uh, more recently where um, it's sort of the model becomes very good at a certain small objective, but then sort of fails at the larger picture. Uh, but in this case, you're not changing the underlying large language model and all of its connections, but you're just increasing the vocabulary. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so now that we have a basic understanding of how this um, model works, let's look at some code, right? So 
Um, the self rag repository tells us to use um, VLLM, which is basically a code base for um, calling and running large language models um, at inference time. So you need to pip install VLLM. Um, and then you need to uh, import uh, self rag, which is trained uh, from a llama to 7 billion parameter model. Um, and then here you can see this is a paragraph, which would be your uh, document store. Um, and then the idea is you ask various queries. So query one is leave the odd one out, Twitter, Instagram, WhatsApp, nothing to do about llamas. And then query two is uh, tell me the difference between llamas and alpacas. So this document is very relevant. Um, and as you can see in the first model prediction, um, it says irrelevant, WhatsApp is the odd one out, no retrieval. Twitter and Instagram are both social media platforms while WhatsApp is a messaging app, right? Um, so this thankfully does not take this context about llamas because it's not relevant. Um, whereas in the second example, it says relevant um, llamas are larger than alpacas with uh, males weighing up to 350 pounds. So in this case, it says partially supported because uh, the LLM has somehow taken this and has said males weighing up to 350 pounds. Um, whereas this, you know, it says llamas range from 200 to 350 pounds, right? So it's not exactly the same. So this is partially supported by this, um, this document here. Um, and that is reflected by um, this generator output. You can do the same thing with different, um, you know, things like I like avocado, and it says, of course, it's irrelevant to both of the queries, right? All right, great. So hope that was useful, and um, you can see the value of having something like self-rag, which is essentially a fine-tuned um, rag-specific large language model. So if you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. And I will see you all very soon uh, in data science in everyday life. Bye.